Hello. Uh, I don't know if you all hear me. I hope you can. I'm here with the um, lovely Aiden Paladin with uh, Mr. Medicker and Mauritian Struggle. And we're going to be having a um, live stream chat. This is the first time I've ever hosted one. So um, uh, Aiden, gentlemen, please be gentle with me. Uh, you know, don't, don't put me too much on the spot. Don't make me do anything computer related that is too complicated for my poor little brain. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Uh, let's all intellectually lube up. up. <laughs> intellectually lube up. Aiden, can you please introduce yourself? Hey guys, um, well we've talked before, you've been on my channel. Uh, I'm Aiden Paladin, uh, that's also the name of my channel, and Altana Volt. Hey guys. Hello? Hello? Hello. Did I cut out? Uh, I, I don't know what happened. I think we cut out momentarily. Yeah. That was weird. I think we did, we did cut out. No, okay. we're still live. We're still live by the looks of it. Okay, we're still live. Oh, okay, so uh, Aiden, uh, go ahead, finish up what you were saying. Oh, I, I, I just said that's, yeah, that's my channel. I'm, okay. I'm into social science and politics, I guess. Um, all ton of volts. What's up? <laughs> uh, Mauritian? Uh, hello, I'm Mauritian Struggle. Uh, I just run like, a little channel here on YouTube where I basically place all my weaponized autism for your entertainment. And it's very small, but it's growing quite quickly. Just generally, whatever I want to talk about, I talk about. And that's pretty much it. And Jim? Uh, I'm Brightside Bob, and I talk about DSP. It's <laughs> nice to be here. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brightside Bob wanted to talk about uh, Equifax. So I think we should get started with that <laughs> particular Fantastic. kerfuffle that's going on. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know how familiar everybody is with Equifax or what happened. I mean, most people know that it was hacked. Um, they're not giving out a lot of details that happened between May and July. Uh, 144 million people have been affected, everything from social security numbers to addresses to full names, uh, apparently has been taken, or at least had access to. They don't know how much was taken. Uh, but the information mm -hmm. that's come out over the last couple of days in relation to it is really scary and fascinating. Uh, the first thing was Equifax put up a website uh, right away so you could check to see if um, you were affected or not. But uh, an Ars, Technical, or Ars Technica article talked about it, saying that the website they were using was a basic WordPress blog, basically. It wasn't secure, and they wanted you to basically enter, <clears throat> sorry, uh, to basically enter the majority of your social security number to be able to get information. So their response to a hack was putting up an unsecure page for you to check if you were hacked, which is just mind boggling. But it's not surprising oh, when you find out that uh, the uh, chief information security officer for the company, Susan Malden, I believe, uh, is a music major who apparently, I, I have no idea how you hire a music major to be your person in charge of information security, but they, they went with it. Well, she's a woman. That means she deserved the job. You sexist oh, of course. pig. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and it's, it's ironic that this happens a month after James Damore was let go by Google for talking about you know, uh, the benefits of hiring based on merit rather than sex to fill a quota. And here we are with one of the potentially largest uh, financially sensitive data hacks that's ever happened. And the, the person in charge of the security for the company was a diversity hire with no expertise in the field. She got a job at, I think, Hewlett Packard. And there was no real explanation how she went from being a music major to working at Hewlett Packard, or Packard as a information security officer and then getting later on hired by Equifax to be their chief, you know, in charge of it. It's, it's mind boggling. Uh, it's not mind-boggling when you understand exactly why James Damore was fired. Wait, wait. Hmm? Just to clarify, uh, this woman, a music major, I mean, she had a BA, not even an engineer, you know. What the hell is she doing in information technology? Yeah. I mean, how the hell did that happen? I, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how she went from one company to another like that. I don't, I don't know how she went from being, you know, fresh out of college with her BA or master's in music to getting into information security at companies like HP and then uh, later on at one of the three largest um, uh, credit union reporting agencies like Equifax. It's it's staggering to me. I mean, I'll tell you it. how. I'll, I'll tell you how because they don't ask questions. They see – you can put anything you want on your resume and honestly they won't ask. I was – I don't know why it made me think of this, but um, Jim, since you do a lot of – uh, what would I call it? Investigation of really fucked up online communities. You are surely aware of Homestuck. I'm positive. 
Yeah. Do you know that they hired they hired uh, um, somebody for that? And I believe it was a woman who had absolutely no experience to make their game, who had no experience, which is like a, an artist, to be their lead programmer. It was the same thing. She's like, I just want to do this. And I said that I had experience in it. It doesn't matter if I actually did or not. You're a woman. So there you go. I, it's the exact same thing. Like, um, uh, but yeah, basically, it's the pussy pass. If you just say, I want to do this thing. If you don't hire them, well, then you're sexist. And you know what? They can actually take you to court for that shit. And I know enough about human resources having um, a minor in it, not a lot, uh, in some experience. You can't ask them too many questions about their resume because if you do, it, it gets into illegality. So well, see, this is why I've up. always I've always looked at, uh, you know, like Blockbuster went under, right? Uh, I, I've talked to people who always talked about using Blockbuster on their resume and saying they worked at corporate. Because there's no way to check it. Because the company's defunct; it doesn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah, I worked at Blockbuster. I was a VP of communications. How are they ever going to track that down? Exactly. So maybe, maybe she did something like that. But uh, the amount of people that are going to be affected by this is the the damage this is going to do if that gets into the wrong hands uh, will have an impact on the economy for decades. It's not the first time this has happened. A couple years ago, was it five, six years ago? Uh, basically, like. Anyone who was associated with government employees had all of their social security numbers um, hacked by the Chinese, I believe. Uh, the, I only know that, I don't know the details of that. I only know it happened because my dad works for the US government and they were like, yeah, your information is public now, essentially. Everything. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And that happened to <laughs> everyone who was a government employee. And by the way, because I'm his daughter, it meant my social security and all my information also, and his wife and all that kind of stuff. Ooh. And it's all public now. Jesus. Well, now nothing's happened. I'm as far as I'm I, I heard that the, the people who hacked this information from Equifax are asking two and a half million dollars, which for a company that uh, Jim, you mentioned that they had uh, three and a half billion in revenue. Well, two and a half yeah. million is chump change. You know, it, it's you know, it's weekend. You know, it's sofa money. You know, that, so that, that amount of money makes me think that this was probably an unprofessional attack. That this was maybe they were using the. Because we had so much kit that got released, like the CIA, the NSA had a lot of their yeah. hacking stuff get released. So maybe yeah. some kid or some fly-by-night operation that found a backdoor through some associated website and got the information. But if you have 144 million social security numbers, addresses, full names, employment history, all that information, you why would you even go to Equifax? You could go and sell that on the black market, go on tour, sell it to whoever you want to sell it to. Exactly. And make so much yeah, money. Yeah, about insane. selling it piecemeal. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I'm thinking like in, in the practical sense of actually how to make money with all that information. If I had like you know a, a hard drive with all that information, how would I you know want to get money securely, quickly, and not have to hassle it? I mean, it's like when you get a kilo of cocaine, you don't want to be selling it you know half a gram <laughs> at a time, right? Ah, I mean, well, they're going to have information. They'll have access to information that'll basically what they could do is cherry pick. I'm going to take mm -hmm. people with really high credit scores who have no credit, mm -hmm. you know, lines open. So somebody who's got like an 800 uh, FICO score yeah. and no credit cards, and then I'm going to sell that identity to somebody, and they're going to go open yeah. a shit ton of, uh, you know, credit lines in their name, order sure. online, and never get caught. Ha -ha, yeah. I have shit mm. credit. Can't fuck with me, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The only people that are going to be safe are people who have terrible credit or neats who don't don't do anything, and their information is not out there. <laughs> um, both. Great. <laughs> 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 Uh, uh, yeah, like that, it's exactly the thing that's gonna, it's going to absolutely fuck the, you know, the, yeah, the people who, who are most valuable well, the, in this. The thing is, how do they keep it quiet? I mean, th this was between May and June, was it? How do they keep it quiet now over the summer? Oh, you want to you hear the best part? I left oh, out the best yes. part. Oh, yes. Oh, the horror. Okay. Uh, yeah, between May and July is when the hack happened. But after the hack was known to the Equifax executives, they sold their stock. Yes. Before they went public. Oh, yeah. It. I heard Dude. that. Yes. That must be against the law. It, it is. It's insider trading. There's no way they're going to get away with that. It's too blatant. No. Me. No, 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 actually, it's criminal. Uh, I think and they, they, they can get into a lot of trouble. They know exactly how no, fucked I, it is. They were just so desperate to try and get out. It's like, well, we're, we're already going to be fucked in the ass. Let's try to. Let's no, just no, no, try no, one no. desperate they, attempt. They, 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 fuck me. <laughs> That, that yeah, because their their stock valuation uh, dropped uh, twenty a share uh, right after the news came out. I mean, it went from like one forty two to one twenty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they took a hit, and and no, and and that kind of insider trading is so blatant that the uh, SEC would have to prosecute and make an example of them. And no way they can let that one slide o over something this big, with this scandalous. No way they they can let it slide. I'm saying that, but at the same time, in two thousand eight, 
and 2009 and 2010, after all the crap that came out following the global financial crisis, you know, the rope assigning and all the rest of it, and in the end, they didn't prosecute anybody. So me saying that they are going to prosecute and they should prosecute doesn't mean that they'll actually do it because, you know, Very true. Well, I, I want to see how uh, the UK and Canada respond because it wasn't just American financial information that was taken. Canadian citizens and British citizens were affected too. Uh, Canadians and Brits who had social security numbers or, or tax No, no, their, their financial, financial information, if they were somehow uh, associated with a business or a company that used Equifax in any way, their financial information could have been a part of this. Oh, oh I see. I see. So if you work for a small okay. company that's US based and you're in the UK and you give your financial information, whatever that happens to be, that information is now mm -hmm. open to be taken. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I haven't even looked into to see, because again, uh, I think, yeah, you said it, it's a coin flip as to whether or not you were affected. Yeah, it's I haven't 50 /50. looked into it because, oh, like I said, I, don't, I have shit credit, so I don't think I'm going to be targeted. By I think, oh, yeah, you'll be okay. I think everybody and my, my be security bad. was already stolen by, by China. China. So, like, you know, whatever. I, I think I'm, like, I'm already fucked either way. And it doesn't matter. But, you know, and I, I think it matters. That's the same thing for everybody. There's nothing you can do about it. And, yeah, you're just, you're probably a 50-50 chance of being fucked. <laughs> How depressing, no, though. I think that, yeah, when the, half a country gets yeah, screwed the, for a diversity hire, like, what the fuck? Right, it's remarkable, isn't it? it it's absolutely fucking remarkable. It's, it's just... Like, Nobody's going to mention about the diversity hire. I actually had no idea about the the head of uh, you know information security being a, a diverse, diversity hire. I don't think that that information is being pushed very hard. I mean, it goes against the narrative, as it were. Right. Well, I mean, they'll probably have a dodge out of it and say it was a related website. But uh, you know, the interviews that she gave uh, previously, talking about what it's like to be in that position and the responsibilities they have, uh, somebody asked her the question. How comfortable are our, you know, chief exec or chief information security officers? Do you sleep at night? And she's like, oh, 90% of us do because we're so secure in how we're handling things. We don't lose any sleep over that. <laughs> and that's from one year ago with her talking about that. So no. that that's just unfucking real. But um, at least what, it's just her. disastrous. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, look, across the economy, we're seeing a lot of these diversity hires that are basically of incompetent people who just, you know, tick off boxes, right, on the diversity shopping list, right? When do you think, uh, when do you guys, all of you, I mean, this is an open question, when do you all think that people are going to, uh, the private enterprise is going to realize, shit, we're, we're getting fucked by incompetent people. We can't afford this anymore. Because we look at across various industries where the, the whole push for diversity and all the rest of it is hurting the bottom line and hurting companies. I mean, Equifax here, and, you know, and, and they always follow diversity in comics, and he goes on and on about the comic book industry of how it's being destroyed by this, by this whole diversity stuff. Yeah. End, or do you think it won't end? I think it's coming to a head. You know, uh, speaking of that very much, what was it? It was for Mass Effect Andromeda, and that they removed all this. They scrubbed it like they're going to scrub this woman being the. This is a much bigger deal, obviously, uh, and not really mm -hmm. comparable. But with Mass Effect Andromeda, which was a big video game that people were excited for, if you know anything about it, the character animations were absolutely abysmal. And for a while, there was this woman who had herself listed. Now it was her herself listed, I believe, on LinkedIn as the lead character. Animator or lead character? Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm, 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 on, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sort of like a, a non, non geek geek. So yeah. wh what are you talking about? The, so, Mass Effect and Drama was a really big game that came out last year, or was it early this year? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And there was a woman who had herself listed as lead character animator, I believe, on her LinkedIn. The, the character animations in the game were, uh, were hilarious, okay? They were really funny looking, they were so bad. And after you know it came out like this is so terrible people found her linkedin they scrubbed that information from that too she was obviously a diversity high and they said no she's not the lead and she was also she had no experience she came in out from nowhere so mm -hmm. yeah they scrubbed that information too and i imagine you know it's a very obviously different thing but in the same effect and as you're talking about diversity in comics and what he talks about it's true people are starting to notice it though and they can't hide this forever people are starting to actually notice that this diversity hire shit doesn't work that what james damore was talking about was legitimate you you cannot beat women into wanting to be in these roles and being good at them if they don't have any interest in it women who are actually um 
you know, interested in, in technology and STEM, they will go into it on their own accord. You can't beat it into women and then give them the jobs with no merit. That will not produce good results. Yeah, but you're, you're thinking that it's coming to a head. Uh, I think it is. Because I think, I think normies are waking up a little bit to being like, <laughs> well, Jesus Christ, half the, half the population of the country and people even in Canada and the UK are going to get dicked over this. Over a well, fucking city hire. You, yeah, you think, yeah, it's... You, you think the same? Um, I, I think it's a problem. I mean, it, the thing that really surprises me the most about the music major thing is they, they could have put a woman in that position who actually had experience in the industry, but they didn't. This is somebody that came from another corporation who somehow got her foot in the door there. Nobody did a decent background check. Nobody did a resume check. Nobody quizzed her about her ability. Uh, the ultimate because, irony for Equifax, yeah. Right, because they were probably worried that if they did, um, it would you know appear badly for them. They'd look sexist, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, you know, even as far as like a diversity hire goes, it was a terrible choice. It's a fucking music major working in information security. <laughs> what the fuck was Equifax thinking? Uh, um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think it is starting to come to a head. Um, I think people are, are starting to question, do we want people in positions because they're good at the job or do we want them because we want to fill a quota? And what kind of results do we get when we quota fill versus when it's based on merit? I would say, look at the response to James Demore's memo so much. The, did you see, I don't remember who produced it. I, it wasn't Buzzfeed, but it looked like a Buzzfeed video. I think it was an actual news outlet of all these women that were reading the memo and they were like on the verge of tears while just reading it. And then of course, you know, yeah. they, they had to take the day off after they read it uh, at Google because they needed to prove how women aren't hysterical or aren't prone to hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> so, because uh, we were so not hysterical that we have to take the day off. That is hilarious. And th they're, they're such a, a mockery of themselves. You have to be so indoctrinated into the, this cult of ideology to not see that. I think people are getting it. Because it, it's funny. It's, it's frank. I mean, if it wasn't so fucked up and sad, it would be hilarious. I mean, it's still funny a little bit. <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I, I don't, I don't know where to take this conversation so far as as this is concerned because it's just it, it it's it's stupefyingly horrifying. This this thing that, that sounded an awkward phrase, but the, the whole Equifax of like, as I said before, the 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 stream started. You know, this is basically the 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 deep state Facebook account. You know, it's with everybody's information about everything, and God knows it, it could be a couple of you know twenty something losers who stumble upon that that um, all that 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 uh, hacking gear that the NSA let slip through the door with uh, former employees. And by the way, nobody's talking about that. It was sort of like a blip on the horizon. And then the fact that all these tools are out there, you know, running free as it were, and nobody's saying anything about that. And nobody's wondering if the, you know, the two are connected. I mean, is anybody mentioning that or, or, or what? Yeah, it's weird. It seems like certain information when it comes to light uh, is just glossed over or not talked about uh, either because it's unpopular or because they don't want the result of the conversation to change people's viewpoints. And so it's like a, a lie by, uh, you know, it, it's omitting things. You know what I mean? Mm. Leaving it out yeah. of the conversation intentionally because you don't want people to have a reaction that you can't control to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh god no, I, I mean this whole thing is just sad really i mean yeah it's funny but sad i because there's also what recourse does anyone have here this we're all already screwed there's nothing anybody can do it's out there it's out there there's nothing anyone can do about this which makes it a weird thing to talk about because the, well, the, the, normally like with a lot of political issues or something you can be like well what could we do to fix it oh here fuck you know there's nothing well, yeah. They, 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 oh, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, okay. I was just going to say, yeah. There, there's nothing people can do about this. I mean, the only hope that anybody in this country has, the half of the country that would have got screwed over by this, um, is that the government somehow is able to find out who did it and prevent them from moving that information. But they have no idea That's who it happening. is. That's not right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it could be a kid that thought it was funny. It could be a foreign government. It could be a, a state actor. They have no idea who did it. 
Right, and I'm guessing and that the, the fact that this happened three months ago and they still haven't found who the culprits, the people who actually have this information, probably means that they're never going to find out who has this information. Yeah. The astounding thing is, I wonder if you turn on CNN right now, what are they talking about? Are they talking about this or are they talking about Trump and Russia? <laughs> probably Russia. talking about Trump and three scoops of ice cream or some shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trump stole uh, uh, like breaking news. Trump stole fucking kid off a uh, like fucking well, like shit off a baby or some shit. You know, their their current way that they're doing this, they've moved that Trump Russia narrative so far that's like, well, a couple years ago, Trump was trying to build a hotel in Russia, and that proves collusion. It wasn't built, and the deal didn't go through. But no, 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 no. collusion. That's proof of hacking. Therefore, this is going to be completely. You know, my my, my honest opinion about Trump is I don't think he's going to last a year. I think that he's really? going to just going to throw in the towel at some point because I think that he's just you know he's just going to say well, why why deal with this shit and just quit. No, you know? see, I, I don't see that happening. I, I think he's got a stubborn streak. I think he yeah. even if he oh, wanted to throw the stubborn. towel in, yeah, he will keep yeah. going at it just to spite them. Yeah, but the thing is, see, the one the thing that he wants the most is precisely the respect of these people who despise him and are throwing Never. shit his way every day. I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and I also, I think that the guy never expected to win. I think, I think that that, he, that, he, could, that could be very well true. But I, I, I think, I think, you know, that's probably I think true. he he takes after his father. I mean, there was an interview he did on 60 Minutes before he put his hat in the ring for this, mm -hmm. uh, where they're talking about his dad and the influence he had. Uh, and mm -hmm. his father was like, you know, never be defensive, always be on the attack, don't take shit from people, crush people that get in your fucking way. Um, you know, if you're standing at the end, you're a winner. Right. And I think that uh, I think that's the mentality he has. And uh, even if he doesn't get the respect, I think he sees it as fuck Washington and fuck politicians. They hate me here, so I'm going to stay here just to piss them off. I, I know that the problem is that I think he does want their respect. That's why he keeps doing this. Sh and that that is a major pitfall for him. Yeah. He, he wants the media to respect him, even though he keeps shit talking them. But it's like he, he doesn't understand, I think, on some level that if they're never, go it doesn't matter. You are never, ever, ever. These people are so despondent that they are, and I mean, many people on the left, not just the mainstream media, but certainly them, they are never going to respect you. They're never going to prove of your presidency. They're going to fight till the bitter end to try and get you removed. So just fuck off with it. Stop trying to appease them. It will never work. I think yeah, he's- I, I completely agree. Mm. I think he's, but it's, it's, a hard, it's hard for him because yet I think he does want the respect very much. So it's hard for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy. And he reacts mentally. negatively by firing everybody in this fucking, uh, you know, in the White House who had any positive. Yeah, influence. because that's the other thing. I mean, uh, from an organizational standpoint, his White House is a complete mess. He keeps firing everybody, you know, and and so how can you have any kind of, uh, you know, administrative stability in order to pursue the policy goals that you have? And also the other thing that this guy he won, yeah, sure, you know, but and everybody says that he's especially six hex and hammers claims that he's playing 4D chess. But the thing is, he he's not actually, you know, getting any policies that he wants. You know, they're not coming out of, of the Congress as as bills as legislature that can be signed and implemented. You know, well, you can't Here, here's Kevin Trump on the repeal and replace not happening. That's fucking John McCain's fault. Fuck McCain. Oh. Well, that's that's what I think he's yeah, doing. Well, that's, actually, that's actually smart. I, yeah. I think what he's doing. I think the approach he's taking is to try to implement law changes and put it basically back into the House and the Senate. Like I'm not going to let DACA go through. You guys fix it. And when mm -hmm. they fail to do it, it makes them look bad. I don't want Obamacare. You guys fix it. And when they fail to do it, it makes them look bad. I think well, he's he's playing a game where he's putting it on them. He takes the heat initially, but in the end, they look bad because they can't come together and create a common consensus consensus on how to go forward yeah uh the thing is that it's not most people i would say do yeah. not have the political acumen to understand that because i see everyone saying that, like oh trump couldn't get his couldn't get obamacare replaced that must mean it's trump's fault like they they have so <laughs> little understanding of how politics no, but, uh, the, the, uh, it, politics. It, it's, it, it, it's either it, intentional or it, it's either intentional intentionally being intellectually dishonest or just being stupid. I don't know which it is sometimes. No, no, no. About, about Trump, about yes. Trump and, and the way he's moving forward, it seems to me that uh, what you're saying, yeah, it could be interpreted as a deliberate, deliberate, deliberate ploy, excuse me, 
But it, from my sense, it could be that he's simply just, you know, playing whack-a-mole and just hitting it, whatever pops up, and it's just turned out that way, but not in a deliberate sense. I don't feel that the guy is driving his administration. He sort of seems to be being buffeted by the winds as they come yes. and, and just reacting as opposed to being proactive. Exactly. Um, I, I think... I think the thing with um the the thing with Trump uh, watching his actions over the last year, I suspect that he's one of these people who didn't really like. I mean, he obviously had his campaign promises and he knew what was popular, but I think internally he didn't necessarily have the like the desire to take power in order to do something with it. I I suspect he is somebody who wishes for power for power's sake. So that's maybe why he's not being as effectual as we perhaps expected. I don't know if it's that kind of implies. I mean, I know we know he's he is an egotist. I, I think that's honest. I and I I very happily voted for the man, but also because I supported him so hard, I'm critical of him as well. Because who who has more to lose than me in that case, uh, or or than anyone who voted for him? Uh, he, yeah, I, I I think that it's look. He's surrounded by neocons. He's he's used to running a business where he can fire people who don't live up to his expectations. That doesn't work in politics in the same way. You need to keep some people around you. I think you are going to have a more pot. And and I'll tell you this about Trump. He is a a family businessman, as Jim mentioned as well, like the um, effect of his father. This is why he tr uh, trusts you know uh, his family. He trusts his family first. That doesn't mean they're good influence, but he trusts them first because he thinks that they're in his court, that they're you know rooting for him. Mm -hmm. Not smart. But based on his experience, I understand why he does that. Because, I mean, everything about his um, his uh, campaign even was like, who supported him first and foremost was his family. Who supported him was well, business and family. Well, perhaps. But uh, I wanted to turn a little bit back to, to something. Uh, Jim, I want to ask you something. I'm totally turning the conversation off to this, another topic, but it's something that's fascinated me. You recently had the rub-a-dub-dub uh, uh, episode on, on your channel, okay, and I, I've I've never been as quite as laughing so hard or as horrified as I was by that conversation. I just want to ask you. I think that this is a question a lot of people want to ask. I know that Aiden and I have talked about you in this regard. Is how do you find this shit? I mean, it's 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 how do you find it? Please explain. Sometimes people will send a link. Sometimes they'll stumble across it on a you know an image board or forum. Uh, with you know like in Ross particularly, uh, I came across his live stream right as he was talking about uh, looking up videos of naked kids in bathtubs, uh, and then trying to deny it. And then within ten seconds, somebody responded to him saying, "Well, you said you had a problem and you were getting help with it." So you know that really piqued my interest, and I go on there, and it just devolves into a shit show from there. You know this guy's got. He tried to throw everybody else under the bus to make himself look better, but it made him look worse. Because, you know, he went from a guy looking up these kind of videos to now suddenly associating with people that were self-identified as pedophiles and hebophiles, according to him. Um, you know, it, it, talking about how he did this every, you know, every week, a couple times a week for years. And saying that, you know, I'm looking up naked kids because I think they're cute and funny like cats and dogs and I want to be a dad. That That's so bizarre and it just didn't ring true. Uh, and him talking about stuff like, I had a therapist, but I had to let my therapist go because they were going to call the police uh, because I was talking to a friend who was going to come over. Like, it, it's just, I, I don't know how to peg him. I, I don't know what his, his issue is. I would suspect that he's probably schizophrenic uh, based on some of the stuff I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a sociopath. Yeah. I don't know. But, he, you know, yeah. he... he oh, wait, how old is this guy? Uh, he's 20. 19 or 20. Jesus Christ, All the people man. involved in this are adults. They're not. None of them are teenagers. None of them are kids. Him, uh, his friend Ruby, her boyfriend, uh, his other friends. They're they're all adults, um, and it, it, it's just bizarre. But it, you know, like looking through the videos where he's talking about his grandmother's yelling at him because he lives with her. You know, you need to take a shower. You need to get clean. He hasn't yeah. done it in three to four weeks. Um, oh. You know. <laughs> It's it's stuff like that that makes you go, holy shit! You know what the fuck is the story with this guy? Um, it, it, but he 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 alternates between playing the victim and acting like uh, he's being bullied, and then screaming his head off about murdering people and doxing them and destroying their lives. So it's like this weird spectrum he exists on. But yeah, it, it's just you know, I, you know I don't know how to react to that. You know, you come across somebody talking about this shit, and you're like, okay, let me ask a few questions, and then they lose their mind about it. How did you come uh, across it, that channel in the first place? 
I, I believe somebody linked it to me. Uh, people were talking about this guy for a couple of days, and I had some time to kill, so I, I probably clicked yeah. the link, and then right as I popped on, he's talking about this shit. Um, you know, I, I, I've dealt with it one subject similar to this before, which was Nick Bate, who was a guy mm. that um, tried to prove to a judge that he didn't molest his stepsister by filming himself masturbating with uh, shit. Yes. That was horrifying. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. God. That was his legal defense. He filmed himself jacking off to shit and wanted to send it to the judge as proof that he wasn't a pedophile. I don't know how that works, but in his mind, it did. You know, I think his oh, autism is a choice. I think he was, he was only into shit and not into kids. Or something was oh, his work. Yeah, you must, it must have been that must have been his rationale, you know, like no but, shit turns me on, not children. Look that guy <laughs> up. He, you know? he, look, here's what I want you to do. In your mind, you guys who don't know who Nick Bate is, imagine what you think this guy looks like and then go look at a picture of him and see how it matches well, up. <laughs> okay, well, whatever it is. The the thing though that that sort of like that scares the shit out of me to tell you the truth. Uh, is and because I, it scares me because I'm the father of two small children. Uh, that pedophilia is becoming normalized. That freaks me out. You know, there, famously, there was an article, a couple of articles on Salon, you know, one title, you know, I'm the pedophile, you're the monster. And it was just, good they God. It. And it seems as if the society It's is, been removed. Yeah, they scrubbed it. After yeah. Milo. They removed uh, everything. Yeah, yeah, I wonder why. After, yeah, they couldn't... <laughs> yeah, because they, they couldn't, you know, run that with a straight face after, after tarring Milo as a pedophile. Whereas if you actually... Okay, this is... I'd, I'd ask you guys. I listened to what Milo said, and what Milo seemed to me, please correct me if I'm wrong, he seemed to be saying that when he was a uh, teenage teenager realizing that he was a homosexual, he basically engaged in homosexual activity with older men, but he acted, he, he, uh, from his point of view, it was with complete consent on his part, and he did not feel that he had been abused. And yeah, George Takei said the Whether it is, you know, uh, you're a little bit robot but George Takei said the same thing, oh, and George Takei is a hero of the left, so nobody gave a shit when he said the same fucking thing. George Takei makes me cringe. Uh, the other thing is that, yeah. uh, the thing that they were mad at Milo about, and you could be mad at him if you want, is that he said that he was involved in these Hollywood parties where there were young boys who were being molested, essentially. I mean, it's absolutely statutory rape. But everyone in Hollywood has now come out and said, this is a thing that happens, but you, you know, you... Brad Pitt has done it yeah. and said, like, this shit happens in Hollywood. But for some, but because Milo was a conservative and, you know, think about him, whatever you like, uh, I yeah. have issues with him as well. It was because he was a conservative. It's we can hang him on this. And but means we also have to remove yeah, our, and also the our pedophile that, article. That, that, that all, all of these articles came out at the same time. It was sort of like a repeat, repeat of the Gamergate thing, right? That, that mm -hmm. all, all the press came up with stories and those stories take time to write and they were all lined up and they all went out at the same time from all these different mediums. It was a hit job and it was a, a semi-coordinated hit job as to the inside information as to how that coordination happened. I would we would not have any information about that. But going back a little bit to the to the business of our society is normalizing it. And I find it incredibly troubling. And especially with this push to have um, transsexuality of children is sort of like you know, if, if a child, a, 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 you know, an underage minor who doesn't know anything, right? They believe in Santa Claus, for crying out loud. If they decide that they're uh, uh, of the opposite of their biological sex, then you have to treat them. And I, it seems insane to me. And I'm wondering, and when is this is going to stop? Oh, the police is coming for me. Uh-oh. Yeah, Google doesn't like the content of your stream. They've decided to silence you. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the London Metropolitan Police, yeah. I mean, the Google Metropolitan Police, yeah. But uh, seriously, how is this going to end? Because people keep saying it's a moral panic. But this It's not a moral panic. To it, it's going to end with the sexualization of children. I, I don't think, it, I mean, it, it seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? They've already if done. you create the scenario where you say that children are able to identify what they want to be as far as gender goes, I feel like I'm a girl because of this. I feel like I'm a boy because of this. Um, you're, you're setting a stage. You're, you're opening that conversation. You know, my default position is kids are idiots. You know, one day they want to be a fireman. Yeah. The next day they want to be a spaceman. They don't know what the fuck they want to be. 
We don't let kids drive cars. Yeah. We don't let kids vote. We don't let kids smoke or drink. We don't let kids shoot guns. We don't let them sign up for the military. We don't have them get jobs. We don't let them pay taxes because we all understand from a societal level that children are fucking stupid <laughs> and that they haven't developed enough to be able to make reasonable decisions. And so when you're, you know, when you're faced with a culture that is starting to push not just, you know, gender identity, but child sexualization, you're, you're opening the door for the argument to be made. Uh, you know, I, I, ironically enough, brought this up on a stream that I was on with Milo and with Sargon uh, like two years ago, where I said, when you start seeing them mm -hmm. push terms like pedosexuality, rather than just calling yep. them pedophiles or child molesters, that's when you know it's gone full tilt. Yep. And I think they're trying to edge it towards that. Um, you know, as far as like the Milo thing goes, I think a lot of people were really bothered, not so much with him talking about having sex with a priest, but yeah, the, the Hollywood parties. I mean, this is going on right when Pizzagate, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, with all that shit's yeah. being talked about and Pedo Wood's being talked about. And Milo just casually mentions that, oh, I was at parties where kids were in Hollywood and getting, you know, fucked by older men. And everybody's like, why aren't you talking about that? Um, so, yeah, I can understand yeah, that, the frustration was, and anger with that. Yeah, but that was oh. two years ago that he, he mentioned that. I mean, yeah, he, he hadn't hit it big yet. I mean, he was on his way, but he hadn't hit it big when he would, it was on the Joe Rogan well, show, you, right? you're, you're forgetting, you're forgetting um, when he was going to give a presentation about Pizzagate, he said he received a phone call from somebody in Washington telling him, not yet, don't talk about it. So he canceled that. So oh, there, really? Yeah, there's weird shit in regards to this, and I, I don't know. But I find it funny that the Reagan Battalion, who I really do believe is behind the opposition report on Milo that did all this, I find it funny they would have spent a quarter of a million dollars to get information which is publicly fucking available. These are two YouTube streams that have been on YouTube for two years, you're right. Joe Rogan and the um, uh, the Amazing Atheist podcast. So right. the fact yeah. they're paying that kind of money to get that information where they could just fucking Google it is staggering to me. I'll do opposition report. You know, Reagan Battalion, if you're listening, I will do your opposition <laughs> reports for you for a quarter of a million dollars and send you all the oh, fucking YouTube fuck links yes. you want. Yeah, yes. no shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for a job. Actually, I'll do that. actually you would, if I needed oppo research, you'd be the guy to call. Yes, definitely. But uh, I, I, going back to the, the sexualization of children, Jim, you're thinking that this is that this is baked in and we're not going to be taking a step back. Is that basically your bottom line, that, that children are going to be sexualized and, and pedophilia or something not called pedophilia, pedosexuality, whatever they want to call it? Well, that's going to be look, at, look at how society has evolved over the last 50 years. Um, you know, when we talk about gay rights or transsexual rights, uh, people would bring up the argument of, well, you can't say that it's going to keep getting more and more extreme because it's a slippery slope fallacy, which is a legitimate thing. Mm -hmm. But just because a fallacy exists describing a scenario doesn't mean that scenario can't fucking happen. You yeah, know, exactly. The same condemnation that we used against homosexuals in the 50s and transsexuals in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. uh, disappeared as society became more tolerant. And I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, but I'm saying the arguments used against those two groups are the same arguments that are being used against pedophiles. Right. You know, it's, it's disgusting, it's immoral, it's anti-religious, yeah, exactly. all these reasons blah, blah, why you shouldn't blah, blah. do it. Yeah, uh, and, and and I think that, you know, where do we go from here? I mean, there are really only three things left, aren't there? I mean, you've got bestiality, you've got incest, and you've got pedophilia. So well, no, wait, incest, incest, no, 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 incest is in the rearview mirror. Ever since Catherine Harrison's book, The Kiss, back in 97, the incest is pretty much normalized. People don't talk about it, but if it's, everybody says, oh, well, if it's consenting adults, I don't see the problem. Do you hear anybody arguing against incest? Because of the whole issue of... They're going to be called a bigot. It's, you're going to yeah, be called exactly. a bigot, and they're going yeah. to tell you that, um, well, the data really well, show, because this is true, though, this is the truth, this is the truth, that honestly, even yeah. if you interbreed with a direct relative, the chances uh -huh. of your kids being all kinds of weird mutants is not extremely high. It happens more from generations of that, and given the genetic diversity that we have right now, it would probably take like at least two generations of complete interbreeding. Now you still have a higher risk for weird genetic problems when you intermarry with a relative. Sure. So that's mm -hmm. the kind of data they'll cite. They'll say, "Oh, sure, it's fine. It's not weird at all." And and you know what? Actually, there's there's um, I'm trying to remember the absolute the uh, accurate term, which is that <laughs> because of there's a sort of homophily of people that who are similar to us that we are attracted to. Um, we are always birds of a feather of humans who are attracted to people who generally speaking, look and act similar to us. 
for example, brothers and sisters who are raised in different homes, if they meet each other as adults, and not just brothers and sisters, mothers and, and sons, for example, who meet each other after years, tend to be attracted to each other because of the homophily. Mm. It's actually something that is very weird, but it's because we're attracted to people similar to us. Uh, gross. Well, no, yeah, again, yeah, the, the argument is gross. The... gross. We have like an inherent yeah. thing about us is like, this is not right. And we know why it's not right because somewhere in our, in our genetic uh, background, we know like, yeah, if you do that shit, you're going to have fucked up mutants. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I, actually there, there's, um, there's a study, I, I forget where it is, but it, it seems that the, the trigger to prevent that among siblings is when they're growing up, when they see one another defecating. Uh, I have no idea. Not why for Nick Bates. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to the judge, Nick. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, I, I read that that was that was the trigger. But look, right now we're living in the deregulated sexual marketplace. And what does that mean? It means basically that you can have sex with whomsoever you want, so long as basically three conditions are met. Number one, you're sexually attracted to them. Number two both of you are on the same side of the age of consent. That is, if you're both under 18, that's fine. If you're both above the 18, age 18 or 21 or whatever the age of consent is wherever you live, that's fine, uh, socially and legally, really. And the third condition is that the other person that you want to have sex with actually wants to have sex with you, that there is consent on, on, that, on their part, right? Uh, and it, it seems that they're chipping away at the, at the second limitation. They're already chipping away at the first limitation that you have to actually be attracted to it. I mean, Dennis Riley is basically saying that, you know, if, if, you don't, um, if you're not sexually attracted to uh, transphobic, uh, transgender people, then you're transphobic and you're evil bigot and you should die, Nazi, Nazi scum. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it seems as if, you know, your sexual desire is becoming a political issue and uh, on the other hand, uh, insofar as the second condition of both being on the same side of the age of consent, we see it chipping away with this pedosexuality. I heard and I tweeted, and I forgot the name, of a couple of new terms for, uh, for um, it's like sort of like cloverleaf or something like that. 4chan? <laughs> new terms for pedophile? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, they, they tried to rebrand it. Yeah, I they're, they're, they're trying to rebrand it. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I, I think I know what you're. I think I know what you're talking about. I think the new term is liberal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they said that one. I'd forgotten. It slipped my mind. Yeah, but it just freaks me out, and I'm trying to figure out if this is you, Jim. You're of the opinion that this is, you know, it's on its way. It's baked in. Aiden, what do you think? Or are we gonna? Are we going there and then gonna be coming back, sort of like okay. a yo-yo thing? <sighs> My take on that would be, one second, fucking truck. Um, I think that this is going to be, much as we're coming to a head with this SW, the diversity hire things, this is going to be, yeah, map, that's it. Minor attracted person, someone in the trap said, minor attracted person is the new term. Um, I think this is going to be the hill they're either going to die on I think it's the hill they're going to have to die on if they want to really go this far and include um, P in the LGBTQIAA plus thing. If they want to start including that in, in their acronym, it's going to alienate a ton of people because anyone who understands anything about uh, pedagogy or about child psychology understands that uh, pedophilia is horrifying to children, that children cannot consent, that children do not understand yeah. sexuality and that it, it fucks them up forever. Yeah. Yes, it does. But I think, I think we have, um, I think with this, I think that uh, Metica here is right because there is historical precedent for the sort of these sorts of things, these sort of severe things happening to children. Like in Carthage, there was a lot of child sacrifice. So I don't see, especially considering what's happened over the past 50 years, in spite of a lot of evidence, I, I can see this happening. It might take a lot longer than what has happened with trans people over the last, say, two, three decades. But I, I wouldn't rule out that P actually becoming socially uh, accepted. Well, I, I, I think it's a, um, you know, I, I do think it's baked in, but I think it's a self-solving problem. I think morality is going to chip away and the arguments are going to be made in the favor of it. 
but I think that uh, physical survivability is going to play a role in it. And what I mean by that is we're kind of on the cusp right now of a post-antibiotic world. And sexual liberation, which was preached to people from the 60s onward, about having as many partners as you wanted, about having the experiences that you wanted, being free and liberated as an adult, kind of flew in the face of modern uh, morality and you know uh, societal norms. So people basically just fucked each other and they didn't really care. But I, I think that as we start to see you know STDs and diseases emerge that can't be treated anymore, I mean, we've got cases of gonorrhea that can't be treated. There's nothing that works on them. When that shifts from something like gonorrhea to something like syphilis, where it goes to your brain, it drives you crazy and you die, people are going to start freaking the fuck out. So I think we might see a return to very, very hardcore, conservative, traditional values, not because we hold that morality in esteem, but because we have no choice. And I think that's going to be what is the pushback against kind of the breakdown in our society, if you want to look at it like that. So I, I, mean, I know that's like a weird, no, a weird conclusion, but I, I think that's where it's headed. Because we, we have no antibiotics. They're not going to really be able to engineer bacteriophages quickly enough. What are you going to do? Drink mercury? Inject yourself with you know, like silver? Um, yeah. you, you're pushed into a position where you can't just go out and fuck to your heart's content. And I think that as people stop doing that, sex is going to become less of a I'm liberated and progressive thing and more of a scary thing, and I think it's going to shift it back the other way. Mm. Well, I, I talked about this a little bit when I talked about what the actual K factor is in terms of evolutionary social psychology. I don't want to get too much into that. I will be talking with Tilder, I think, next week about it. But um, we saw this with the introduction of oral contraceptives uh, for women, which was that yeah, you didn't have to really worry about shit anymore. And as we saw advances in medicine, you could just engage in all of these uh, risk-taking behaviors as a woman. You didn't have to worry about fucking anything, did you? However, that catches up. It catches up socially, and now it's ca catching up uh, physiologically and biologically. And you don't get away with cheating biology forever, I think. <laughs> mm. No, certainly not. Right. I was thinking. I was actually thinking that what would catch up with us is the uh, uh, Muslim invasion of the Western democracies. That that would happen before what you, Jim, are outlining insofar as uh, diseases and what have you. That their hardcore moralism would take over, just as they take over. They are taking over our. our yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm. I'm very. Everything ends, and my thinking is at this point that the Western democracies will end by way of, of being overrun by the, by the Muslim population that we have imported and are allowing to uh, overtake us. I mean, that's my thinking at this point. And their morality, their strict morality, and, and their, their, their uh, keeping women uh, uh, very, um, very under the thumb of the, of, the, of the Muslim patriarchy, because they really are patriarchal. Right? I, I think that that is, is going to be the end of our, of our civilization and a return to a morality. It's going to be an Islamic morality, but at least, you know, you, you're, they're not going to be having sex with children. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're talking about, uh, you, know, yeah, exactly. you might want to reconsider your point on that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Also, although Islam is, is a patriarchal society, a patriarchal system, we need to be aware that Islam is worse I would say probably, or at least as bad towards fucking men as it is towards women. Men are the lowest fucking, they're lower than dirt in Islamic society because they're considered completely expendable. I, I don't like that idea. I mean, I, I understand it, why people like myself who are like, who wonder why these feminists don't ever bring up problems in the Muslim world. Well, they don't bring up men's issues at all, but men's issues in the Muslim world are completely fucked. And yes, they do fuck children. Um, yeah, I mean, Aisha, yeah, who was absolutely. Muhammad's favorite wife, was seven no, when he I married know. her but but hang on he didn't <laughs> fuck her till she was 11 i believe or 12. oh a gentleman yeah i know oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. He let her get yeah go her muhammad seven. yeah oh yes our true gentleman cheers <laughs> <laughs> tips turban yeah I, I don't know if it will fall to a caliphate I, I you know i think that there's a history for republics turning into empires Maybe what we'll see is some kind of a, a, a radical nationalism taking root in the West, whether that's like an American empire or some kind of European empire, I don't know. 
but mm-hmm. maybe people will pull back from the idea of a worldwide caliphate and say that's not the direction we want to go. But it, you know, regardless of if, if it's Western or Eastern or Middle Eastern, I really do think that uh, we're going to be forced into a more conservative mindset just because we're going to have to react to things that are happening as far as disease goes and just progressive attitudes go uh, and being able to kind of manage it and mitigate the damage that has on the economy and other things. Mm. Yeah, because it makes sense to think that we're living in a window, uh, uh, the window of antibiotics, as it were, because the antibiotics are unprecedented and it has created a population boom because all these people who are alive uh, because of antibiotics, but there is inevitably going to be a point where um, viruses and diseases will be resistant to any antibiotic we create. Uh, also, the pharmaceutical companies are not investing much money in R&D insofar as antibiotics. Aiden, you'd be one to ask about this. Am I correct or incorrect? About the, the okay. <clears throat> so, from what I understand about, now I, I'm not the person to ask about medical stuff. I'm mm-hmm. a social psychologist, which is kind of like a joke. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> uh, from my understanding, though, the companies that companies pay for this, big par- big pharma, what they want are they want drugs that are going to make them the biggest bang for their buck. The, the right. drugs that they put on the fast track are drugs that are going to make them the most money. You right. know, because they're going to be sell them to more people. So, for example, everyone hates Martin Shkreli, right? Because, oh, my right. God, he bought that aid medica- AIDS medication and then drove up the price. Well, there were like 100 people using it. I, that's an, an exaggeration. But there weren't a lot of people using that particular medication. And actually him buying it and driving up the price made it possible for them to do more research into perfecting that medication so it was cheaper and easier to access. I know that that makes people upset, but they don't like to look into the details of that. And I and I know Martin Shkreli is a very um, mustache twirly sort of guy in terms of how he's perceived publicly. But... Uh, for example, uh, there's this guy, um, uh, Yoshi Obayashi, who's a comedian, but also one of the things that he does is he, he involves himself in medical studies. And it's absolutely mm-hmm. true that they just want to, they want to put forward, you know, what's going to sell. That's, and they will fast track yeah, you no, and no, I, I, if you're actually qualified or if you have the disease, they just want to put that. Wait, uh, how do you say his name again? Uh, his last name, Martin what? Shkreli? Shkreli? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was like I thought it was like a cross between Shrek and Shekel. I kept calling it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I put the Shekel in there a little bit. I think it's Shkreli. Is it? Sh- I have no clue. I I only read things. I don't. So I have no fucking idea. Oh no, I, I don't know. I've never really I've never really listened to anybody pronounce it, so I wasn't sure. Shkreli? Yeah. Neither am I. To tell you the truth. Yeah. Well. I, a few years ago, I was uh, like peripherally involved a little bit in 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 uh, pharma thing. And what I understand is that what they're interested in is they are not interested in any kind of cure for any disease. They're interested in creating drugs for chronic conditions. Yes. Uh, Because for this reason, it's a chronic condition, they take them forever. Uh, You know, you solve a disease and, you know, no more sales. And they want sales. That's the thing that they most want. Um, Consistent sales over time. Right? It doesn't matter what the price of it is. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's expensive or cheap drug. They just want to be feeding it forever. And they don't want any disease to be cured. Okay, because a cure is a killer of the drug, right? Um, And so I know that that is one of the reasons that they have not really invested much money in antibiotics, at least the companies that I was sort of like semi-familiar with, which were all in Latin America. But they were the representative of um, pharmaceutical uh, companies around the world, you know, and and the big ones in the United States and and, in uh, Western Europe. And so it it seems that... if some superbug develops, you know, who here had to read that stupid book, um, uh, Earth Abides, I think it was called? Where it was some, some novel about like the end of the world. It was sort of like The Stand. Well, some superbug pop- pops up, you know. It could happen in our lifetimes, although sure. I think all kinds of shit might could be. happen in our lifetimes. Yeah. That I would mean, cause all the kinds of shit. If <laughs> Donald Trump is president, so yeah, oh, all no. kinds of shit has happened. Oh, by the way, um, who, show of hands, who believes that uh, Donald Trump is responsible for Harvey and Irma? Oh, do you want me to break out my notes? <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. why not? Yeah, yeah he right. was. He was also responsible for the earthquake. Also, um, oh, in Mexico, yeah, because yeah. they don't want to put the wall. The weather is yeah. racist. Putting down yeah, the weather is racist. Yeah. Where would I start? Yeah, eclipses are racist. Now, oh, no, I no. know the, the thing that the thing that blew my mind was okay, that let's I be real about the eclipse believe, thing. Honestly, I, I could not honestly believe that there were people on the left saying that 
the people in Texas and Florida had it coming over Trump. Oh, yeah. I, I can't believe it. I mean, that is just insane thinking, you know? And nobody, I've got a great one. At least the, I've got yeah, a great tweet uh, that I saved. Or was the same fucking asshole who uh, was saying, I don't, I think Yamal Strong retweeted it, where it was this guy being like, oh, I hope all those, those Trump supporters from Texas die. And then 10 days later, I was like, oh, somebody please help me and my family in Florida. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Calm as a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's just yeah. <laughs> Life changes pretty fast. Yeah. Life comes at you fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that that's just Oh, well, anyway, uh break out your notes, Aiden. I know that you're dying there with your notes. So no, break I'm not them dying. out. I've got tons of notes on everything. I take notes for everything. Um oh. a couple of things. Well, if we want to talk about, first of all, the idea of global warming, I think that the, the whole idea that there's a 90, 97% consensus is already uh, dubious at best. It also relies on the fact that, I don't know how much I want to get into this. I got I got two pages of notes on global warming and go the idea, it, whatever, oh. I don't know how much you want to go on. But your chat, they're going to call me a whole, oh, that make them mad if I keep doing it. I'll go <laughs> All right, these are my exact notes. Okay. Uh, basically is that we are exiting a small ice age that ended in 1870, correct? So when you see that, that the temperatures have gone up since 1870, that's completely correct. The temperature absolutely has risen since 1870. I don't have the exact number. It's um, risen 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit over the last 100 years since the end of the last mini ice age. So 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit, the EPA estimates it may go up between 0.5 and 8.6, which is a big estimate, but the EPA has no fucking clue. And in fact, we know because consistently, government estimates and models that are used to determine the increases in climate every single year have been wrong and overestimation. Every single year since 2000 that I have data on it, they have overestimated how much the climate would go up. So that 8.6 number, eh, not sure about that one. Uh, also, what you guys, what everyone I think doesn't always know is that like everyone thinks this is the hottest the Earth has ever been. That's complete bullshit. Uh, we actually have very good reason to believe that not only we don't know, for example, how hot the Earth was in thousands of years, thousands and thousands and millions of years past, but all global climate scientists absolutely deny and reject the period between 950 and 1250, which is called the medieval warm period, wherein there was unprecedented yeah. growth both in population, in farming technology, and in, a, well, it's the fucking beginning of the Renaissance, Renaissance, whatever. Oh, you... Yeah, there was the, uh, there was actually vineyards up in Yorkshire back then. Yes. Yeah. It was when grapes were introduced yeah. to the United Kingdom, is the, this exact period, because they were not excellent there beforehand. Um, yeah. Shit. Uh, so that whole like, um, you know, Al Gore's like hockey stick graph of going up, it intentionally, and everyone who says that is a, an idiot who is completely ignoring the medieval warming period. And in fact, when people have gone back and looked at the data that were involved in the collection of that, they found they, quote, lost the medieval warming period data. And the way that they collected that is they used a three, they 390% oversampled or at least overused research on that assessed the tree ring data. The problem is that trees grow more both when there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and when it's warmer, right? Yeah, because yeah, that, that was one of my objections to the whole global warming issue. Okay, so the earth is warming up, so isn't that a good thing? I mean, it, it's going to be a more fecund uh, ecology for all living organisms, so what's the big deal? We don't even, okay, carbon dioxide is not inherently bad. It's good for trees. It's what, it's part yeah. of the process of photosynthesis. The whole idea yeah. of the 97% consensus among scientists is absurd. The original study that conducted this was um, between the 1993 and 2003 agreement uh, on, uh, it was a, or excuse me, it was a meta-analysis of studies conducted between 1993 and 2003. Uh, however, that consensus made no all of those across all of that supposed 97% consensus, not a single study made any kind of conclusion about whether or not the increased CO2 and the increased warming was good or bad for the environment. Uh, Cook also in 2012 did a similar meta-analysis of 12,000 uh, papers in his meta uh, at which only 33% said anything. This is a environmental studies papers. Only 33% said anything about man-made climate change but they still, of all of those, made no claim about any harm to the environment associated with it. He still claimed 97%. Okay. However, 
However, so, so hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry to end up. I, I, I'm guessing <laughs> you asked this... me to go ham on my notes, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. But no, the, the thing that I'm interested in this in this topic is is not so much of the issue of uh, because it seems that it's pretty clear that it it seems to be a load of bullshit. Okay, it's it's not so clear cut. So the issue becomes for me. And even if it worked their cut, it would actually long term could be beneficial for the for the planet. But for me, the question becomes: Who is pushing this so hard? The climate, uh, global climate, um, global warming, and why are they pushing it? What benefit? I mean, qui bono, right? That that's the ultimate Globalists, question. Who benefits? Man, they they're yeah, they're but, aiming for a global okay, state. Part, yeah, but the globalists. Yeah, for what purpose? They want to use this as the thin end, thin end of the wedge, in order to capture more reg regulatory power over the entire world. Is that the idea? Well, two two because parties they, benefit. Uh, uh, this is way outside my area of expertise. But if you're asking me who would benefit uh, from yeah. pushing that, if it were a narrative, if it was just fictitious, yeah. who would benefit? Uh, yeah. One would be through carbon te uh, credits, right? Money. Uh, the other would be right. stifling development of a rising world powers. You know, America looks at China and says China is developing too fast, it's becoming too powerful. How can we stymie them? Well, we put forward the idea that global warming is an issue to hold back their industry by not letting them do what we did to get to where we are right now. That would be the two things I see at, you know, carbon credits and trying to stifle developing nations. Um, well, the carbon credit market blew up and that's over, right? And, and essentially over. Um, and, and insofar as stifling China, yeah, they can talk all they want, but the Chinese don't give a shit because, I mean, <laughs> look at Beijing, right? I mean, it's like a, like a super over there, right? Well, look at the uh, Kyoto Accords. I, mean, I, 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 I see your point, but, but I'm, I'm unclear as to how effective the, the, that would be. You know? Well, nobody's saying it's effective, but I mean, if that's the only two, I guess, beneficial outcomes for it that I could see was to, to stifle development of competitors and to try to tax and raise money uh, from domestic businesses. Uh, you yeah. know, whether or not it worked out well for them, I, I couldn't say. And again, I know nothing about this subject, so I'm just going to shut the fuck up. But that that's my two cents on that part. Yeah. I, I actually I mean, don't, I don't know, know either. I, I, either. I'm, I'm a complete ignoramus in, in this. But I'm really fascinated because it's just too much hysteria over this crap. And it's, it's, somebody has to be making a buck off of this. I think, well, yeah, because they've got, you know, interest in... in in foreign governments were because yeah they make money off of that they make money off of, of taxing i mean this is why look okay so you hate coal you hate natural gas you hate oil why do you also want to get rid of nuclear energy hmm? there's not a lot of co2 emissions there uh you know why it's because it, it costs a lot of money to produce other alternative resources it's relatively it's well relatively uh, cost efficient to set up a nuclear power plant sure is isn't it Compared, yeah, exactly. Compared to making a huge fucking wind farm, and who's going to make a lot of money off these alternative energy sources? I mean, it's one thing mm -hmm. like uh, Billy uh, Billy Bob Joe fuck or whatever his name is, for, who's a fucking hipster putting his uh, solar panels on his roof, right? But if you're like getting governments paying for thousands of these wind, like thousands of miles of wind farms and solar farms and stuff, that is a lot of money coming in, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Look, they've ruined. They've ruined my state. They put these shitty fucking wind farms, which are, I'm, I like to call them avian Cuisinarts. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they just kill the fucking birds, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's and, and they don't, they don't produce a lot of energy, just like solar energy does not. Um, yeah. I mean, it's obvious that there is a financial, and, and I don't completely understand. I mean, you can say, you can put a bunch of quote of uh, parentheses around who's behind this, but uh, yeah, I, it's obvious there's financial interests because otherwise this wouldn't make any goddamn sense. I will go really quickly. I'll go through the rest of my notes. If cool. that's okay. Um, on, on the weather and uh, just to, to explain some of this, uh, a couple more things about bullshit. We went over the 97% consensus is bullshit. Uh, that was also, yeah, Legates, uh, which is from the university. He was the university of Delaware's climatic research department's director analyzed the same meta-analysis that I just mentioned earlier about the 12K meta between 1991 and 2011 and found that actually only 1% of scientists in the uh, 12,000 papers assessed made a definitive claim that climate was directly a man-made result. Uh, so, for example, we hear that Greenland, uh, the ice shelf is falling off, as such as in Antarctica. 
that's not true. Greenland, they're ma- the Viking burial grounds in Greenland are still under permafrost. I keep talking up the show that I fucking love called Fortitude, which is awesome. Because uh, we hear about polar bears. Oh, the polar bears are all dying, right? The polar population has remained between 20 and 25,000 since 2000. Uh, and it's actually gone up since the 1960s. In fact, if you live in Svalbard, which of uh, Norway, you have the people in Svalbard have to carry rifles around with them because there's so many fucking polar bears. Like, that's a part of living really? in Svalbard, Norway. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't a, ki- didn't a kid get killed recently by one of them? Probably. Because they're all over the fucking place. <laughs> um... This, this, although the sea level has risen over four, about 400 feet over the last 20,000 years since the last major ice age, since our mini ice age, which ended in 1870, as I stated, it's only risen eight inches. And in fact, it stopped rising in about 1997. And they, they have no explanation, or excuse me, 1990, they have no explanation for why the water has stopped rising and the climate has stopped massively rising. It's been like just little tiny bits. But this is the thing I wanted to get to about the idea of the hurricanes being racist or what the fuck ever. Um, <laughs> is that here? Here's the important shit. We have had the same number and intensity of hurricanes that have occurred between 1940 and 1970, as did occur between 1970 and 2004. That's source Patrick Michaels. The global frequency of Category Four to Five hurricanes has had a small and insignificant decrease, and the percentage, meaning like percentage of four to five category versus one to three or one to three category hurricanes has had a very small and insignificant upward trend. What this means is that there's been no fucking change in the amount of hurricanes, but this is, it gets better. Cyclone energy has been on a downward trend consistently based on the number of hurricanes and cyclones, the strength and the duration of cyclones worldwide. I believe by the time of me stating this, it was well until the current one, Irma, it was like 145 months without landfall of a hurricane since William in 2005. And of course, landfall is defined when the eye of a hurricane hits the land. So it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters other than if the eye actually hits land. Mm-hmm. That, that, that has been since 2005, the longest period of time without landfall of a hurricane since uh, the NOAA Institute, which is the Natural Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, has been registering and keeping track of hurricanes since 1851. I rest my case. <laughs> my eyebrows true. are nearing my receding hairline. What can I say? <laughs> I'll, I'll go not so tough after being raped. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look about the about the whole global warming thing and all that. I mean, I don't know. I, I think it, it seems like a lot of bullshit. I'm just curious as to you know who's benefiting. That that's all I care about because it, it just seems prima facie like it's a bunch of bullshit. Seem prima facie. When was this uh, inconvenient truth film? When did it come out? Like 15 years ago now. At this point, you know, I mean, a while ago, right? And uh, I, I don't. I think I think it's all bullshit. But changing the topic completely in a completely different direction. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get my wanted to talk about out. YouTube drama. <laughs> uh, Tell us about this YouTube drama. He said, well, you "Oh know, yes." What, 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 what do you want to talk about? About, about Vox Day? What, what was going on there? I have no idea what you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so I, I was recently getting caught up with this uh, because people were talking about it. Uh, there, it, it's like a convoluted story of multiple things happening at once. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so Andrew Anglin. Uh, on Gab, it posted something about uh, Heather Hairs, right? Oh, that's sorry, sorry. Could, that could, you, could you just give a little background to, to uh, Anglin? Uh, yeah, Daily Stormer uh, has been getting his shit kicked in from all the registers and uh, you know service providers because they don't want to host his content. Right. Uh, and so he was posting about what happened in Charlottesville. He made some kind of post. This, I may be telling this wrong, but this is my understanding of it, about her on Gab. Gab got a takedown notice about it. Uh, this started some kind of a confrontation or, uh, I guess, back and forth between him and Vox Day, uh, where he had basically thrown out and other people had thrown out that Vox Day was a pedophile. Now, Vox demanded uh, that Gab give uh, him their IP addresses so he could sue them for defamation. Mm-hmm. What makes it so interesting is Vox Day, in responding to people on his own blog, had said, if you don't like somebody, if somebody says something and labels you a certain way, just call him a pedophile. Fuck it. <laughs> so, I, 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 yeah, well, I find it hypocritical. Well, why yeah, is Vox Day upset? Yeah. Why does he want to sue Andrew Anglin if he's telling people to do the very fucking thing that Andrew Anglin did to him? Yeah. 
and you know, he went on to a live stream. They they had a debate, right? And at the very end, Anglin asked him, "You would burn down Gab uh, over this?" And uh, Vox Day had said, "I would burn down everything for you attacking." <laughs> Jesus. Well, yeah. I mean, the the hypocrisy of it obvious, you know, and. It, Quite possibly, if if, if uh, Anglin's up to up to speed on what Vox Day is putting out there, it's it's possible that Anglin got the idea from Vox Day himself. You know, when, I, I would love to hear that argued in court. I, I was taking his advice and doing what he asked me to do. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to call him a pedophile. Vox Day told me to call him a pedophile because he said I was racist. <laughs> No, it, it just it just seems like schoolyard bullshit. What I find troubling about the whole um, Daily Stormer thing is that um, the Google stole the, the, the um, I, I don't know what it's called, the, the, the computing thing that allows him to have a website. He just needs to get his own private servers. I, I'm kind of like, Anglin, how stupid are you? Just get your but own the, private the, servers. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, is he, go ahead, Mauritian. Yeah, I mean, he is a 32-year-old man without a driver's license, so <laughs> it does raise questions, doesn't it? I just think if you're going to, I mean, I'll say this, honestly, I think uh, The Daily Storm was hilarious. It, I, it was, you know, it, it is, I guess, a quote, hate website. It was very funny. But uh, if you have thick skin, I, they're not very nice to women. But look, like, I don't mind being made fun of. It doesn't bother me. So I'm glad um, you're of that opinion because the chat is lighting you up. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking no, it, okay. Uh, uh, you know, long-term follower of yours. I don't mind being called a hole. <laughs> it doesn't fucking bother. I think it's funny. But uh, no, uh, that shit doesn't bother me. Uh, he needs to get his own fucking servers because people aren't going to... No one's going to support him now. Not in this climate. Just get your own fucking server. It's not that hard. Come on. No, but I, I, I agree. He should have gotten his own server and done it himself. I mean, it's not that complicated. And I well, they're they're taking the domain. I mean, he's getting yeah, he's yeah. getting fucked at uh, yeah, the, a level he can't he can't fight against. If nobody yeah, like GoDaddy won't deal with him, Google won't deal with him. Um, yeah, all the Google, other providers won't. Google took his domain, didn't they? That is the biggest. That's yeah. the only issue I actually have is that Google took his domain. That yeah. they essentially put it in jail. Yeah. It. So, so what's what's uh, what's to stop them to do it to, to anybody else? I mean, shit. Why don't they do it to the Republican Party for that matter? Uh, well, there's nothing to stop I mean, them, is there? There isn't. You know that that's the point. And, I mean, one of the things that bothers me, um, I, I keep hearing this shit about moral panic, right? It's all moral panic. You know, hey, my all this shit is gonna blow over. Blah blah blah. But my thinking is oh. that, see, over the years, look. Uh, when I was in college in the early '90s, there was this SJ shit going on, right? SJW shit, rather, going on. And here we are, close to closing in on three decades after that. Okay, now all those people are are, are in corporate positions, and they believe this shit. They they think that this is how it is, especially over the last uh, um, three decades, four decades, where the society in the Western democracies has become so stratified, because you have the 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 top one percent and that twenty percent service class at the top of the socioeconomic ladder. The, the service class of the of the one percent, you know, the lawyers, the doctors, the personal trainers and interior decorators and all that those fucking people, all those people in the media, right? Those people are di completely divorced from the reality of the eighty percent of the population. Now, those people were indoctrinated with all this SJW moralistic crap, and they are now in positions of power. Okay. And they are exercising that power. And they are, like, for instance, taking the domain of, of the Daily Storm where everybody's like, oh, they're neo-Nazis, you know. But you're, you're breaking the law. You are stealing something that doesn't belong to you. Uh, uh, how can you justify it? Justify it just on a moral basis? And my thinking is we are not in a moral panic. This is the new normal. This is the new state of affairs. Uh, and it's, it's a, a, kind of a, um, a kind of insanity that has me extremely fearful because because this insanity you know okay the daily storm we don't like them and then it's uh, uh and and stormfront and then it's you know vox day and then it's this guy and then eventually the window of what is allowed becomes so narrow that that everything becomes uh forbidden i'm not i'm not articulating properly what i want to say but i hope that you guys are understanding what i'm saying no, yeah no i'm understanding mm -hmm. Are you agreeing or, or think I'm full of shit? 
<laughs> my my take on it as far as what the new normal is i mean I, I've, I've covered this myself talking about where i think things are going um mm -hmm. it, it's not it goes beyond like the daily storm right i think people are fine with what's happening to anglin because they think yeah. it's just oh he's this evil nazi who cares yeah, who cares but google's already overreaching i mean they already were threatening a website that had a news story written by james elsa from a year ago and they told the website, right, if, you don't yeah. take that, uh, if you don't take that news story down, we're removing all AdSense from your website. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it goes back to what I talked about in uh, one of the videos after Demore's memo came out, where, you know, the, the new mm -hmm. tactic is to uh, deplatform you, demonetize you, and deperson you, basically unperson you. Uh, we're going to remove your ability to make money, yeah. so it demotivates you from wanting to continue. We're going to deplatform you and remove you from, you know, uh, websites and services that would help spread your message, and we're going to deperson you by basically shitting on who you are and not giving you any chance at uh, responding to it. So, also because you went to Charlottesville, uh, Google, yeah. I don't know for whatever reason, somebody at Google didn't like that and decided to pick this particular website and say, if you don't remove that article and get rid of this guy, uh, you're fucked. And it, yeah. you know, if people think it's going to stop with Anglin and people like Alsa. They're they're out of their fucking mind. It's going to you know it's going to well, be they, they, how much can we push it? You know, uh, death by a thousand cuts, a little by little, right? You yeah. don't turn into some kind of fucking Orwellian nightmare by just going on TV tomorrow and saying, "I'm the fucking Antichrist and I want to <laughs> shit up your lives." You do it little by little. You know, yeah. you make people get used to it. You make them get accustomed to getting fucked mm -hmm. in the ass. So yeah, when they're getting willing fraud, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, well, the, the thing that they did to Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is, the, I mean, all respect to the guy, he's never said anything that, that can be remotely considered uh, 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 obscene or, or even pushing the envelope. I mean, everything he's saying is, is fairly mainstream. I mean, fairly, uh, um, he, he is very articulate in what he says, but nothing that he is saying is like outlandish or outrageous like the Daily Stormer. And he got D, D, I mean, unpersoned. He was just, you know, throw it out of the window. And on top of that, they denied his appeal. They only reinstated him because he was such a big deal. You know, and if they're doing it to him, who, who, uh, shit. I, I, you know, when I get upset about stuff, I become completely inarticulate and I sound like a fucking idiot. Yeah. And so that's basically what's happening to me right now. I mean, I'm you're, really you're, you're fine. Your your points coming across. I, I think most people are in agreement with that. I mean, I don't think that. Um, it, my my concern with this and where it's going is, I like humor regardless of where it's coming from. I like funny shit. And humor always, you know, courts edginess. I mean, that's just yeah. the reality of it. Has to. And as, as we get rid of serious speech, where people are saying, you know, 1488 gas the Jews, <laughs> um, it, it's going to go from that to fucking the equivalent of a knock-knock joke. It's, oh, you know, we got rid of the serious speech, but now we got to get rid of the playful speech. We can't let you make that joke. It's a little too edgy. It's a little too hurtful. You can't say I that word in that context. And that that's my fear of where it's going to go. I agree 100 percent and i think part of the thing first of all humor is a um what we call in communication expectation violation or expectancy violation humor has to be like i didn't expect that that's why it's funny not all but most hashtag not all um in, in part though also if you are worried about racism or any other shit like that if you make it into a joke it loses any power it could have right if you are joking about like gassing the Jews in 1488, that stops being a powerful phrase. Well, just look at Netanyahu's son. He's posting merchant memes on his Facebook right. account and pissing exactly. off the liberals in Israel. Uh, he's Netanyahu's fucking kid is saying that George Soros is the fucking devil of the world and giving well, Jews a bad name. And you know, they're all upset because how could you post that image? Are you a Nazi? They're they're calling a, a fucking Jew a Nazi. It's crazy. I saw on Gaff the other day, on Neo Gaff, people calling Ethan Klein a Nazi for his white face video. The fuck? Like what? they and they've called David they've called Dave Rubin a Nazi, they've called Milo Yiannopoulos a Nazi, they've called Jesus, who have they not what Jew have they not called a Nazi at this point? It's like well, any the, Jew who the, the thing is also by calling everybody out. a Nazi, you know, and a white supremacist or, or whatever, you know, yeah, it, it drives people to say, you know, if they, I'm already a Nazi, you know, fuck it. I'm going to throw in my, my I'm going to join the Nazis. I'm going to be a Nazi because I already am, you know, so fuck it. You know, what, do I have, what do I have to lose? I mean, it, it seems that by, by squeezing out the middle, the, the nuanced middle, you're just squeezing everybody towards the extreme. And, and 
Uh, by the way, I was fi- I was surprised that uh, the mainstream media finally is is like saying that Antifa are a bunch of terrorists, and you know, I, I'm not in the U.S., so I'm not really following U.S. Uh, mainstream media. But are they eventually realizing that Antifa are not to be fucked with, and that they should be like stamped out? No, that I think was a reaction to you know really blatant public footage of Antifa beating people in the streets. There was really no way for them to get around it. And that was like a day after they wrote these, you know, articles praising them as being the, you know, fucking second coming of the civil rights movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finding uh, peace through violence. Yeah, I love that one, CNN. Yeah, so it's, right. <laughs> so it's back to normal with us. They though. had to change that headline. They got so much Well, fucking left. A, they had to change it. It was insane. I it mean, was. who in his right mind wrote that copy? I'd like to know, you know. I mean, Jesus, but... Uh, um, well. Yeah, no, they, they're, I, I mean, I just made the video, it's actually funny, I just made a video about this, I, <laughs> and then the next one I'm going to do is on moral panics, the second half of it, but, um, no, the the mainstream left cannot condemn Antifa, even though they're doing it now, but I'm telling you, the little bit they're being like, oh, well, that was kind of bad, the thing that they did when they beat an old man, or they uh, were attacking a guy in a wheelchair, that wasn't really great, they're going to turn back on that. And the reason why is because Antifa is politically aligned with the mainstream left. They agree and they believe in the same things. They have the yeah. same goals. They're just their militant arm. And when you turn the mirror to them and you call them alt-left and you say Antifa is the same as you, even if that's a shitty term, it makes them recognize on some level that they agree with Antifa more than they would like to admit. And that's why you can't, you can't insult Antifa. They will, they will not attack Antifa. They will not talk honestly about them. So, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's basic. Tosh Will and Turner 74 social identity theory, all port 1954, uh, 1954, um, fucking uh, Cohen 1973. Jesus, it's everything. Well, yeah, I, I think what we're kind of witnessing right now is, mainstream media and maybe left and liberals are, are, I think, taking the wrong approach to what they see as a problem. They want to silence the means of radicalization, but in turn, that's radicalizing people. You know, Mm. if if you, it's a lure of the unattainable. If you tell somebody they can't have something, they want it. Even if it's not something they would truly actually enjoy. If you remove these kinds of people and remove what they're able to say, I I know I'm kind of jumping back to what we were previously talking about, but when you take that away from them, they want access to it because now it has a mystique yeah. to it. So when you're you're going around and you're shutting down these websites and these people and saying, uh, you know, they're too dangerous. What they say is too dangerous. We can't let you hear it. Now suddenly I'm interested. Maybe I wouldn't have been before. You know, you, you have all these. Yeah, you have all these people on the left. Uh, I, I think a good parallel would be in Europe, like in Germany. You can't question the Holocaust. I mean, there was a lady who was just recently sentenced again to, is it ten years in prison? Because yeah, she, she's she, eighty-eight. She denied, she denied the Holocaust. Yeah. If you really want to have a conversation and convince people that the Holocaust is completely legitimate, all the numbers are completely legitimate, the worst thing you can do is silence people that disagree with that. Yes. Let them talk. Fucking have an argument about it. But if you try to take away the means of people being able to argue the point, you're going to make people think something is going on. You're going to make them want to look at the other sources that you're so scared that they're going to look at. And I think the, yeah, uh, but- I think the left and the, the mainstream media is going to learn this lesson uh, the hard way going forward with their internet censorship. Uh, with their narrative building, and I, I, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I think we're going to see a lot more extreme viewpoints in the next decade compared to what we have right now. And as far as Antifa, uh, a bunch of skinny jean wearing fucking gelato drinking pussies that attack trash cans, and I think they got embarrassed because they got their shit kicked in at Berkeley and other <laughs> places. And so they felt yeah. they had to step it up and get violent because they were being made fun of by fucking everyone at that point. Oh, yeah, just just a bunch of losers. But the thing is, also, you say that it's because of, you know the, the the attraction of the forbidden. But I think it also has to do with you know, if if you are forbidden from saying certain things, uh, even saying them, and even entertaining them, then you start to believe that that might be actually the the case, that it actually might be true. Uh, uh, um, and you and you start and it, if you are not allowed to say that then you find yourself in the position of saying, well, that's what I sort of believe in, but now I can't say it. So, oh, and that kind of uh, um, strain on, on people drives them towards holding on to those beliefs that might, in a climate that was not so uh, repressive, 
people would realize, oh, you know, this is a silly belief. Wh whatsoever the belief may be, whatever, whatsoever the radical extremist belief might be, on either the left or the right. Oh. I mean, we all know of right-wing guys who are believing all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, yeah. Because if you mention it, everybody is like, oh, you can't say that, and everybody follow, falls on them like a ton of bricks, and so they wind up, you know, well, why can't I say this? And they tend to start to believe it, even if under normal circumstances they wouldn't believe it. And the same seems to be happening with Antifa. As, as, so Could I explain the psychology a little bit? Go. This is what's called psychological reactance. Mm -hmm. um, it, I see people call it the strides end effect. That's, not, right. that's part of it, but the actual theory is called psychological reactance. It's very simple. It, you can go back to children. Uh, you tell children fucking don't push the button. What do they want to do more than anything is push the button. It's psychological reactance is a perceived or realistic um, removal of a freedom that is possessed by the individual. So whenever we perceive a freedom is removed, we want to reinstate or enforce our own freedoms, you know, in any way that we can. So part of that is, well, uh, it's going to make people more interested in these things that you're telling them, no, no, you can't look into that. You can't talk about that. You can't think about that. It's going to make you more interested in it because of how psychological reactance works. This is a very basic tenet and principle of human psychology. Moreover, when you make information damnable like that, it creates a stigmatization. And what happens in stigma is that stigmatized groups tend to uh, uh, come together in private. They do not discuss this shit in public. What happens is a lack of communication. As a result, is a la lack of communication between groups. And we're seeing it on both sides. And when there's lack of communication between all groups, it means intergroup conflict. That is exactly the psychology of what we're seeing. So, so yeah, basically, I can see that playing out like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, exactly what they're doing of trying to repress "quote unquote" fake news and all the rest of it, and all this, this, uh, this Sovietization of social media, and and the Google platform that's basically creating this extremism. That's what you're basically saying. Yes. Uh, the, the more you try to hide and repress, the more people will be interested in it. And, right. and if they're wondering, yeah. they're like, why are all these Gen Z people interested in right-wing politics? Well, you've, I hate to fucking quote Paul Joseph Watson, but you've made it the counterculture, and the counterculture is always interesting. Sure. To young people in particular. I hate to quote him on that, but he's actually psychologically right on that. Why do you hate to quote Paul? Because um, he's Paul a fucking Watson. meme. <laughs> I like him. I love him actually. But he's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think he's hilarious. But I thought that he had left YouTube, but he's not left YouTube. Oh, I, he I, I came don't... back after a week and did like a little fucking uh, guess who's back, guess who's back thing. And I was like, mm. no, no, you don't get to say yeah. I'm leaving YouTube forever and then come back after a week and. He's such a whiner. He's like, he's he's so whiny. It's like a lot of the mainstream, right? Like, you look at that Dinesh D'Souza. Like, I, I swear, guys, Democrats yeah. are the real fascists. I swear. Like, no, no, it's no. He's so wrong. I read his entire book, and you, I you I liked it. No, Which no, book? I, oh, it's good. The big lie. The big lie. I I liked the historical parts until he got to the end where he started to be way hitting home on the idea, like, oh, the left are all fascists. No, no. They may use brown shirt, black shirt tactics, and by that I mean Antifa does. Which is that, like, whenever I say things like that in videos, I then have to uh, put, like, a subtitle of I'm not saying they are fascists. I'm saying they are using the same tactics as the brown shirts, because people can't understand the, the difference between that. It's his last chapter is complete nonsense. And he just, he says, like, we need to remove fascism. No one's allowed to have fascist ideas. That's you know, you're allowed to have that opinion. I just don't agree. And I think if you consider yourself to be a free speech absolutist or absolutist, you can't have that opinion or you're not a free speech absolutist. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we've been going on for about 90 minutes, so I'm going to call it a day insofar as this. And, and ah. I just, yeah. Is there anything you, any of you guys wanted to say or sum up or anything before we uh, oh. say our goodbyes? Yeah. Real quick. Uh, Jim, Mm -hmm. When you were on the Dick Show, <laughs> what's that? You were on the Dick Show, like three weeks before uh, yeah. I was. Yeah, uh, yeah. I Dick that, asked yeah. you a question. Dick asked you a question about how many bananas you could reasonably show up your asshole. 
<laughs> oh, okay. No. Okay, no, we're, we're not pausing right Hang away. On. We're going to hear the answer to this question, please. No, no, no. He answered it. But the, the thing is, Dick asked me. He was like, I don't know anything about Jim. And he's like, you know his channel. Lucky trucks. He's like, you know his channel. What should I ask him? And I said, I'll tell you exactly what I said. I said, I don't know, man. He's old school internet. You could ask him any question, like how many bananas could he reasonably shove up his asshole and probably have a decent conversation. So what did he ask you? How many bananas you could reasonably shove up your asshole? That was not my fault. <laughs> Uh, no, Ma Masterson was pretty. Uh, Masterson was pretty fun. I, I had a good great. time on his uh, on his podcast. Uh, I, yeah, it was a good time. De that was the question that was asked, quote by me, though I did not actually phrase it that way. <laughs> well, it's a question everybody wants to know after TJ, uh, you know, wowed us with his banana I mean, fetish. Oh, really, God. it is. It is a good oh, question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I can I ask you uh, for a psychological viewpoint on what would possess a man to strip completely naked and pour hot oil on his balls and then send that video out to people? <laughs> How real do we want to get? Um, <laughs> autism of the highest order. <laughs> yeah, extreme autism. <laughs> you know, I'm just curious about that. You know, because would... it's pretty fucking extreme, isn't it? That's boiling oil he's pour or pouring on his uh, junk. I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but I would imagine it's a lot because I'm not. See, I, I'm not an analytical psychologist. I'm not a clinical psychologist. I'm a social psychologist, which is bullshit, retarded science. But I would imagine that's around the same reason that someone would leave their camera on while they're masturbating while getting ready to play video games. You think he pulled a DSP? Do you? <laughs> no, he did not. That was intentional. <laughs> Oh, I just, uh, my, my favorite clip, and I think if you look on YouTube, you might still be able to find it because they found a way to cut it to make it hidden. Uh, it's a, because TJ was on CNN, and they, they take the interview with the CNN anchor, and as they ask him a question, it switches over to TJ pouring oil on his nuts and shutting it <laughs> Oh, my fucking God. It's a, that thing has two components. You know, one is the pouring, burning oil on your balls, and the second is posting it. I mean, I, how does this happen? How does it, you know those? It's a two-step of insanity, as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, but the real attention. trick, as far as I think, is that he's he's somehow survived. I, I would die of embarrassment. I would not survive the embarrassment of that. that uh, I have to just... give it to him on that. Yeah, he 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 has come to terms with it, and uh, he he does not seem to shy away from talking about it. He embraced it, which is the only way you can deal with that kind of thing. If you for whatever reason, do something that embarrassing and cringy and terrible, you have to accept it. No, yeah, he, he completely embraced the cactus. I mean, fucking embraced the cactus. He, he went ahead and just married the, the cactus and just, you know, set him up in a nice uh, ranch house, you know, out in the suburbs, you know? I think I guess mean, we, yeah. I, I think that's ahead. all you can do. No, it's the only thing you can do. You have to be like, yeah. No, I, 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 he's a better man than I am. I, I would not survive psychologically that. But it's a, the thing is, see, posting, you know, anything on the internet is forever. You know, posting that shit, why on earth would anybody do that? I've never understood that. I've, I've well, never my, understood My understanding is he, he was trying to send it to a girl he knew, and she thought it would be funny oh, yeah. to share it with the world. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, because well, that's how I convince my women. I, I send them, you know, video of me pouring burning oil on my balls and you know it works every time i'm sure that makes it knock you off my door yeah that really gets some wet doesn't it pouring fucking oil on your balls yeah definitely and I, i'm sure the message that. attached that he sent to her was you see how much i you know i love you i can put up with your shit i can even scorch my own balls so that must mean i'm a loyal boyfriend <laughs> good boy Oh God! Did she send back a video of her getting rounded by Jamal or something? Like that just sounds <laughs> so fucking not appropriate. I, I'm sure she sent back a smiley face, winking or some shit, uh, yeah. right before she spread it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was one of those like little smiley poos that you know. Oh God! Oh, the uh, smiley face shit. Yeah. yeah. Sir Patrick Stewart. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, pull me a hole before we leave because I think that would make your chat happy. Okay, well, then shut the fuck up, hole. Nobody wants to listen <laughs> to climate data. You're boring the chat. What the fuck are you doing? Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. I appreciate there it. There you go. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Okay, well, you know, on that note, let, let's, let's <laughs> call it a good place to close it out. <laughs>
<laughs> now, now the chat's going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah, so listen, guys, I, I'm going to call it a, a, a stream, as it were. And thank you so much for having done this stream with me. This is the first time I'd hosted one, and I was actually, I have to admit, I was pretty, pretty nervous about doing it. So thanks so much for being on. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and hopefully we'll do it again. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, less climate data and, and more, you know, hot oil on the balls kind of, <laughs> kind of stories. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is Coach Redpill. I'm signing off for Merchant Struggles, uh, Mr. Medicor, and uh, Aiden Paladin. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon.